Hi, my name is Christy. Welcome back to my channel. This is a Star Wars inspired video. I don't dress up, never really enjoyed it. I try to rock the hairstyle. I feel like I look more like a German woman named Helga. Who's mad that you didn't do your workout. I cut my hair short, this is what you get. But can I make an apron? Yes, I can do that. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video. I'm so excited. Thanks for being here and may the fourth be with you. For this project, I bought a yard and a half of the white and a half a yard of the gray and it is cotton canvas. So any food or drink that falls on it will roll right off. I am making this apron for Jenna who owns a New Hope Confections and makes the most amazing chocolates ever. I have linked her website in the description box below for you to check out. Anyway, she gave me an apron that she already has and fits her well to use as a template with a few modifications. She wanted the bib part to be a little bit shorter and she wanted the skirt part to go a little further around her hips and pockets. Pockets are always important in an apron. We'll get to that a little bit later. I started to pin the pattern pieces to the fabric until I got a surprise visit from Roscoe. All right, baby, Come here. Come here. puppy, <sighs> booper, Put Roscoe. Can you call Roscoe? <laughs> Roscoe, go, go, Roscoe, go, 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 go. <laughs> From the play growling in the background, you hear my husband was already trying to entertain our in-laws puppy named Piper, who also wanted to get in the action. Three dogs are a lot of dogs. Piper. Piper. back-to-back -back dog encounters I spent the rest of this project picking dog fur off of the white fabric of course it had to be white fabric but I finally got it all cut out so that I can start piecing it together after picking off more dog fur first step is to hem the apron skirt on three sides with a standard rolled hem which just means folding the fabric over a quarter of an inch and then folding it over again I only use pins on the corners since wherever you crease this fabric, it pretty much stays in place, but I did need a little help on the corners. And by the way, I am using a heavy duty needle because this fabric is thicker than cotton and needed extra durability, especially when sewing through multiple layers. To make this apron a little girlier, not too much because Leia was a tough lady, I am sewing two rows of basting stitches across the top. Do not backstitch at the beginning or the end, but leave long tails. Separate the bobbin threads from the top threads and pull only on the top threads or the bottom threads, whichever one you prefer. Just don't do both. The gentle pulling of the thread creates a nice ruffle effect. You can also pull from the other side. Okay, moving on to the belt. This part is going to be hard to describe. I wanted the skirt portion to be about four to five inches longer on each side than the bib. So I cut out a six by 29 inch square to design from. I'm using this picture from the movie as my inspiration. I have drafted a simple curved shape that I can build upon. To finish the edges, I have ironed each side in a quarter of an inch and I'm taking it to the serger before sewing it in place. If you don't have a serger, a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine will work. I now have a complete underbelt to build upon with more belt pieces. Again, this is difficult to explain. I am basically making this up as I go, just trying to make it look as close to the picture as possible and add seam allowance. Same as before, taking it to my serger before sewing it in place for a professional finish. I have cut some squares of fabric to now try and replicate the five belt shapes. Starting with the middle piece, I have drafted what I think looks similar, added seam allowance, cut it out, serged, and sewed it. 
and did the same guess and check for the other four pieces. I've also bought some sparkly buttons, but the other side is just silver for a nice hardware accent on the belt pieces, as long as Piper doesn't eat them first. Before attaching each piece to the belt, I hand sew the silver buttons to the middle. I line up and sew the top piece to the bottom belt piece before attaching each of the decorations. Looking back, it would have been easier to attach the belt to the skirt first before adding the belt decorations. So if you try this at home, keep that in mind. Later you'll see why attaching them first was more difficult. And if you do try this at home, please leave your picture in the comments. I would love to see it. Moving on to the straps. I've cut a neck strap that is 23 inches by three and a half and two waist straps that are 41 inches by three and a half. The waist straps will be long enough to wrap around the front. Fold down one end and flip to fold it right sides together. Pin in place and sew two sides. Here is where I'm realizing my mistake. I did it the wrong way. Instead of sewing closed the open side, I was sewing closed the closed side. Take two. Now I'm sewing the open side. Good job, Christy. I've now sewn both straps and am clipping the corners to turn them right side out. I got it started on the one end and used the blunt edge of my loop turner to push it through. They come out super wrinkly. So before taking it to my iron, I'm going to sew the next strap as well. This one is just folded in half and you sew along the length. They look so much better after ironed. I have ironed it so that the fold of the neck strap is in the middle. To attach the waist straps to the middle belt piece, flip them right sides together and pin before sewing. Here is an out of focus shot of what it looks like after sewn. I ended up cutting out an additional bib piece so I could finish the top in a more professional way. Professional, as I wipe dog hair off of it. To allow for seam allowance, I am moving each of the neck straps in an inch and a half from the edge and pinning in place before flipping over the other bib piece and pinning it together sandwich style. So three sides, leaving the bottom open so you can flip it right side out. Clip the corners and then turn it right side out, poking out the corners the best you can. To attach the skirt to the bib, find the middle of the skirt and mark with chalk and do the same thing with the bib. Flip the bib right sides together to the middle of the skirt, lining up those chalk marks. Pin in place in preparation to sew just the bib part. Sew just below that last line of gathering so that it won't show on the outside. Before switching thread colors again, I am going to do a top stitch along the bib for a nice professional finish. Now that the belt portion and the top stitching are complete, I need to attach the belt to the apron. And here is where I am realizing that I should have attached the belt to the apron first and then sewn on the belt decoration pieces. This way still works, but it required a little more effort and care to make sure the stitching lines blended together by only sewing in between each belt decoration. and I continued my start-stop sewing on the bottom of the belt line as well, making sure that the ruffles are nicely placed as you go along. This apron will be worn by a very talented confectioner who needed functional pockets. 
I have designed themed triangular shaped pockets to match the belt line with a matching pocket top. Both pockets will be a sturdy double lined pocket. So I have sandwiched the pocket top in between the two layers and pinned in place to sew. After sewing the tops, I have a completed pocket on the left and to make the right one look the same, trim off some excess, then invert the pocket so that the points match. Fold over the pocket top in half and flip so that the folded top is sandwiched in between. Carefully pin three sides, leaving about a two inch gap on one end so you can turn it right side out. Turn your pocket right side out. I chose to throw mine just to show it who's boss. Poke out the corners and iron it flat. Here is a mostly ironed pocket and I have closed up that gap we left with some pins. I have tried on the apron to see where the pockets naturally fall and preliminary pinned them in place before making a few measurements to make sure that they are in the right spot. The ruffles make the placement a little harder. Once happy with the placement, sew along three sides leaving the top open, otherwise it won't be a pocket. And make sure you backstitch several times at the tops of the pocket because that is a stress point. This top stitching will also close up that two inch gap we left at the same time as sewing it in place. Add a few more back stitches for some durability and the apron is done. Thank you.